Formula 1 teams are always fighting on multiple fronts. Although we are still waiting for the 2022 cars to break cover, the battle for supremacy in the coming season started long ago. While the watching world focused on the racing on track in 2021, the design and development war that will shape the coming season was silently raging in parallel. Teams will make progress during the season on their cars, and the development curve will remain relatively steep in the first year of a new package of regulations, but the die has already been cast in terms of shaping the competitive order. All 10 F1 teams biased their resources more towards the 2022 cars last year. For some, the trade-off was easy, for example Haas, which had little to race for so did the bare minimum of work on its 2021 car to maximise the focus on the following year's car. At the other end of the scale were Mercedes and Red Bull, who were embroiled in an intense season-long championship battle. So what effect will that 2021 war have on the preparations of Red Bull and Mercedes for the first year of F1's all-new regulations? And could the resources sat by last year leave either or both vulnerable to being beaten by teams that were not distracted by one of the most all-consuming title battles in F1 history? The bigger the chassis rule changes, the greater the chance of the competitive order being shuffled. Given the 2022 regulation changes are widely regarded to be among the most seismic in F1 history, there's every chance it will shake things up. Teams rarely stay on top through such enormous rule changes, as even superficially small adjustments can have a big impact, as Mercedes learned in 2021. But the last time there was a comprehensive overhaul of the rules, the introduction of the wide, high downforce cars in 2017, Mercedes did manage to stay on top. But before that, it was the major rule changes in 2014, which brought in the V6 turbo hybrid engines, but also impacted the chassis significantly that allowed Mercedes to emerge as the dominant force. As for Red Bull, which had dominated the previous four seasons, it was knocked off its perch, mainly thanks to Renault's engine struggles. Perhaps the most famous shakeup was in 2009, when Honda poured all of its resources into developing a car for the new skinny aerodynamic rules, withdrew, and then paid £150 million to allow what was now the Braun team to win the title with Mercedes engines. But the two teams that had fought for the title in 2008, McLaren and Ferrari, started the season well off the pace. While this was partly down to neither hitting on the controversial double diffuser concept, it was also down to how hard they pushed the previous year. McLaren even brought a significant upgrade to the 2008 season finale at Interlagos. There were also major shifts of power in 1998, when the narrow track cars were introduced and McLaren returned to title winning form, with reigning champion team Williams struggling, and in 1994 when Benetton emerged as a championship contending force with Michael Schumacher, and again Williams struggled thanks to the ban of electronic gizmos such as active suspension and traction control. So history tells us there is potential for change in 2022, but there are new elements in the mix that could potentially make this even more likely. We'll talk about those in a moment, but first thanks for watching this video from the race. If you're enjoying it, don't forget to hit like, and if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss anything. Your support is what allows us to do what we do, and we have a huge amount of exciting video content planned for 2022 for you to enjoy. F1 cars are changing significantly, but there have also been big changes that are less easy to see in recent times. These combine to create a perfect storm in 2022. Firstly, F1's cost cap regulations. These kicked in last year, with the $145 million baseline limit dropping to $140 million this year. Of course, teams will spend more than that, partly because there's a few adjustments that mean the real figure is slightly higher, but mainly because there's plenty of exclusions, including driver costs, the pay of the top three executives, and myriad other business expenses. That's a huge change in the way the teams operate and will prevent the biggest teams from using brute force spending. There's now an even bigger emphasis on efficiency, and the impact of the cost cap on the day-to-day -day operation of large teams like Mercedes and Red Bull cannot be underestimated. However, the biggest teams aren't only at the front because they spend more, and the razor-sharp working practices and vast depth of technical knowledge can balance that out. So the 2022 cars will be a test of how strong a team is, with the financial playing field a little more level. Secondly, there's the impact of the aerodynamic testing regulations. These restrictions, which allocate wind tunnel runs and CFD items based on constructors' championship position, with the leading teams having the least, 
kicked in last year and mean that Red Bull and Mercedes had less than anyone. However, over the course of 2021, the two teams had the same amount, as Red Bull led the Constructors' Championship at the halfway point of the season. This means that they each had six months of the minimum allocation. Mercedes and Red Bull will still have an advantage on at least some of their rivals in terms of the way they use their aerodynamic testing resources, because efficiency is a big thing. But the 2022 car will be the first they have designed under these conditions. What's more, the difference in aerodynamic testing restrictions becomes bigger this year, with a 5% increment between teams. That means that Mercedes has just 70% of the maximum and Red Bull 75%. This means if either or both start the season slowly, they are also limited in terms of aerodynamic testing as they attempt to recover, until the allocations are reset at the start of July, that is. These changes mean that Mercedes and Red Bull have had to design and develop their cars with reduced resources compared to what they have historically been used to, and with less aerodynamic testing compared to rivals. As the 2022 cars are a clean sheet of paper design with very limited parts carryover, requiring a massively different philosophy given the return of the ground effect Venturi tunnels on each side of the car, this is a huge test of the capabilities of Red Bull and Mercedes. Mercedes and Red Bull are well-managed teams, so it would be foolish to imagine either of them focused on 2021 developments to the exclusion of the 22 project. But both faced a very delicate balance last year. Mercedes introduced its last major upgrade at the 10th race of 2021 at Silverstone. Red Bull continued to feed in updates as late as race 21 in Qatar. But that doesn't necessarily mean it consumed more of its resources on development. After all, Mercedes had to push hard early in the season to mitigate the impact of the aerodynamic rule changes that hurt its low-rate concept. But as technical director Mike Elliott said at the end of last season, Mercedes picked a line in the sand and stuck to it as far as 2021 development was concerned. Red Bull did a similar thing, with team principal Christian Horner regularly dismissing suggestions that the 2021 title fight had heavily compromised 2022 development. There's an interesting historical parallel here, as the Mercedes team felt that Red Bull continued to develop its 2013 car later than it needed to ahead of a major rule change. While that resulted in Red Bull winning the last nine races, Mercedes felt Red Bull neglected 2014 to do so. And while Red Bull's struggle against a dominant Mercedes in 2014 was primarily based on engine performance, it's still a cautionary tale. But speaking in December, team principal Toto Wolff suggested that it would be closer at the front in 2022 as a result of the various regulation changes. But of course, there is a good reason why Red Bull and Mercedes have carved up F1's championships over the past 12 years between themselves. They are outstanding teams, with high-quality personnel, great facilities, superb working practices, and a culture of success. You need more than just money to win an F1. It remains to be seen whether the very different circumstances of the past two years mean that one or both really does suffer a 2021 hangover. But what's clear is that the conditions are more difficult than ever before for Mercedes and Red Bull. And with Ferrari, which was itself at the front and fighting for the championship in 2017 and 18, potentially a big threat, it's no foregone conclusion F1's preeminent teams of 2021 will stay in front this year. That's what makes 2022 one of the most eagerly awaited F1 seasons in a long time. Let us know in the comments if you think Mercedes or Red Bull will pay the price for compromising their 2022 efforts, or if you expect it to be business as usual at the front for F1's top two teams.